No. For day three of the Spooktoberfest, we're talking about ganja and hess that came out in 1973. No, it's not about that weed as much as I would like to think that, believe me. Directed by Bill Gunn, who had written a lot for TV and starring in a bunch of roles at that point. Ganja and Hess is an experimental horror film, as many like to consider it. It is also a black exploitation film. Yes, that is a thing I just learned about. It's a very niche subgenre that emerged in the 70s. The film was not well received when it first came out, so the producers sold it to another company which released a recut version that was significantly shorter than the original cut. And apparently, it did not reflect the filmmaker's vision whatsoever. The original cut of the film was donated to the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and since then it developed a cult following. By the time of this recording, you can watch the film on YouTube, someone uploaded that. Many consider this to be one of the lost classics that no one knew about. It was remade by Spike Lee in 2014 with the title The Sweet Blood of Jesus. So Ganja and Hess is about an anthropologist who became a vampire after he was stabbed by an ancient dagger. Now he finds himself addicted to blood and it is told in a few separate parts. Right off the bat, I just want to point out that the film really needs some remastering. The film looks very dirty and damaged. I mean, at some point, you can see this black bar on the right side of the screen. I guess it was caused by some subsequent folding or bending, but I, I don't really know. The film starts with blocks of text basically explaining the entire plot to you head on, which I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it feels more like reading and opening a religious book, I think, a theme the film is clear aiming for. There are a lot of wide and or uncut shots and scenes impelling the pacing of this thing from simply tilting the camera to create a very jarring and intense composition that really gives you an upsetting feeling to framing the characters halfway so they're off screen. The use of negative space I find very restrained and tasteful, but I would enjoy the cinematography a lot more if the film wasn't damaged and they had more budget though, probably. But what is Ganja and Hess about? I think that's probably one of the reasons why it is considered an experimental avant-garde film. It doesn't have an easy answer to that. It is a mesh of themes, and what I got out of it the most is the commentary on social, class, race, and religious divide. It also has some satirical tone towards marriage and Christianity that I don't completely understand myself. I'm not that smart. Still, Ganja and Hess is heavily dressed in African culture. There's this auditory cue of this eerie and anxiety inducing piece of music that's played in the back it can really get under your skin after a while but overall i can only speak for myself i just don't think this one really worked for me personally this is not for everyone the style is odd while i like a lot of the technical ideas here the pacing really is a bit dragged out now granted there are definitely a lot of things i don't understand and have to look into to fully appreciate it i can see how this can be divisive you know spike lee's remake didn't sit well with people either based on the reviews so I'm gonna leave it at that. I know this one is short, but I think I've said my piece. Ganja and Hess gets an inconclusive. Let me know what you think of this one. I'm really curious. This one is um, it's 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 it's, it's weird. <laughs>